Welcome to this setup tutorial for drawing racing input. First thing we're going to look at is the presets, the defaults. So when you click on one of these buttons, it will load default presets, which are a good starting point depending on your inputs. And you will get this warning, which will tell you uh, that you're about to overwrite all your settings with the preset defaults. And you can save or not save your current settings to a backup. And if you need to bring that back, just click on load backup. So that's good if you've set everything up for your radio controller and then you just need to uh, flip over to keyboard and mouse for a second and then come back. Okay, so next we'll look at axis rebinding. With um, binding up your axes, you want to open up this panel which will let you see all of the axis names that are there and what value that axis currently holds. So this is all your input from keyboard, mouse, gamepad, joystick, uh, you know, RC, con whatever it is, it's all coming in here. So you need to decide which you know which input axis you want to be your pitch for example and then move your sticks left and right and you'll see the values flip from you know negative one to one and then you'll know that that axis that's moving is is the one that you're moving in real life with your thumb or whatever so then once you've figured out which axis you want um to each of the uh you know throttle your pitch roll etc you just type exactly what you see there under the axis name into the the box that's on the left hand side and that'll be that'll be bound as soon as you type it in and then once you've done that you can uh, preview that you've got it all right on the the preview boxes down in the middle um, you should see them match pretty much what you're doing with your inputs in real life in those boxes there and if they're they're moving correctly then it should all be good uh, once you're flying in game. Dead zone. Dead zone is pretty simple. It's basically just any values on your sticks that are lower than the dead zone amount that you set will uh, get removed. They'll get ignored and your sticks will only start from the dead zone value up. So if you have a, an RC that jitters or gives you kind of unreliable data at low values or doesn't quite center perfectly, then you will want to set your dead zone maybe a bit higher. What Expo does is it basically brings down how potent or how much effect you're going to get out of stick movements that are close to the middle to centered. This is really good if you have your rates really high, so it's a very twitchy, responsive quadcopter, then you will want to still be able to fly smooth. So increasing your Expo will allow the smaller movements near the center of the stick to have a more moderate effect on the quads, while the end parts of the stick throw will really like spin you very fast with the high rates. Having your inputs trimmed right is super important. If you don't have it trimmed right, you will start to notice your quad will drift or turn or do whatever on its own gradually and slowly. So basically what these trim offsets do is they allow you to get your stick input as close to zero as possible when, when it's centered or at rest on the controller. So as you can see here, I'm just nudging this slightly until I get zero. Um, it can help to bump your stick to make sure that where it's centering to most of the time is where you've trimmed it for. So yeah, that's that's centering right on zero now. So that, that one's good. And you just want to go through each of your sticks and do this for each one um, so that when you're off the sticks and they're centered, you're completely um, not, not applying any commands to the quad to turn or flip or whatever. There are quite a few camera settings in the game. The first one we'll look at is the, the modes. So you can change between third person FPV and line of sight in third person mode. It's uh, obviously set like this behind the quad. So um, this is not the easiest way to fly, but if you want to look at your quad, you can. In uh, first person view, that's as if you were piloting the quad, which is the normal way to race. And then there's also line of sight view if you want to experience trying to fly the quad from completely uh, being outside of, you know, uh, detached from the quad as if you were watching it from the sidelines. Next we'll look at the camera lens field of view. So increasing this will increase how much, um, how wide you can see out of the camera lens uh, and will also increase this warping effect that you get. So this is obviously a ridiculously pronounced, but you would never fly with it that high. And just to show you the other extreme, this is as low as it can go which has this kind of Gears of War look where it's very, very zoomed in. Um, and for a beginner, you might want to use a lower field of view just so that you're able to see everything in front of you. The gates are really wide, but what you will miss out on is that spatial awareness. You won't feel the movement or the position of your quad as well. 
and you won't feel as fast. But as a beginner, that's probably helpful just to help you wrap your head around the mechanics. Now we'll look at the camera pitch angle. This one's pretty straightforward. The more of this you have, the more your camera will be looking up from uh, from the frame of the the quadcopter so the more you increase this the more you'll notice that just by looking flat and, and aiming at a gate for example you will automatically be moving forward because your quad will be turned tilted forwards uh, relative to your view or your camera so when you when you're going a lot faster and you're you're going to be turning you're going to be looking the quad at the ground a lot harder to get that speed you'll want to increase the camera pitch so that you're able to see where you're going um, but maybe starting out you want to start with a lower pitch and then get used to that uh, gradually as you increase it um, but eventually you'll you'll definitely want to have this nice and high so back onto the physics of the quad we'll look at rates rates are basically just how uh, fast your quad is going to turn in any particular axis so you got your your pitch and roll um, you'll see here in my examples as I turn up the rate for roll you can just see the quad spin that much faster it's just doing that many more degrees per second on its roll axis and that's what that's what your rates are going to do so um, as a beginner you want to have your rates nice and low so that uh, your inputs aren't causing too drastic of an effect on the game's physics and you're just flying into walls and doing um, crazy stuff you want it to be nice and gradual and gentle and then as you become more skilled and you need to do faster turns and flips and rolls and whatever else, um, crank up the, the rates and, and that's how you'll achieve that effect. The last thing we'll look at is the LED color of the quad. Um, this is pretty straightforward. You just set uh, using the RGB sliders what color you want other people to see shining out the back of your quad. This will help people recognize you when they fly past you or you fly past them, whatever. And um, your name and score will also be colored with this uh, and just to just to help everyone uh, know who's who and what's what now we'll look at setting up a radio controller so if you have a expensive radio controller like a tyrannus or something then chances are it will already have a usb interface which will bring in the inputs as standard windows kind of joystick inputs which will uh, work just great with the game and you won't have to really do any setup other than just plug the thing in and bind your axes correctly the way i showed you at the start of the video if you have a less expensive um, radio controller then you're going to, going to want to do things this way just have a look on your radio for the uh, signal output or the audio output and then you're going to want to plug into that an audio cable, a double-ended one like this. If yours does not look like a headphone jack at the back of your radio and instead has some other crazy plug, you're gonna just need to get the adapter for that from eBay or whatever, they only cost about 10 bucks. And then you wanna plug the other end into your computer, into the microphone input. Then you're gonna to wanna to launch this program, it's called Smart Proper Plus, and what this does is it interprets the audio signal that is gonna come out of your radio and turns that into intelligible um, inputs from from your sticks which we can actually use in the game uh, you'll be able to see those green bars move up and down hopefully correlating well with your um, radio but if they don't um, you want to first probably check out the microphone settings here and there's windows offers a bunch of ways you can boost the audio signal of your microphone one thing i noticed is that you can boost this too much and then that will actually get a worse reading in smart proper plus so you know don't just crank it up to 30 plus decibels you may want to actually bring it down if it is on that and click all the way through all these different um, interpretation programs that smart proper plus has built in and try to find the one that is the most stable where the number of channels stays static and things jitter the least once you've done that you want to jump over to the joystick tab where you can confirm that the uh, red bars down there are moving in sync with the green bars. The red bars represent the data that's being sent to VJoy, which is a virtual joystick um, plugin which installs with Smart Proper Plus. And this is actually what the the game will be interpreting, not the green bars. They're nice, but the red bars are really the actual joystick inputs. So make sure that those are working. And if they're not, you might need to look online or reinstall Smart Proper Plus or something to get those to synchronize. 
One last thing you'll need to do to give this the best chance of working is check out your USB game configuration, game controller configurations in Windows and make sure that the virtual joystick VJoy, uh, which we just talked about, is set up as your preferred controller or com preferred device here by clicking on advanced and choosing it from the drop down box. Then uh, you want to launch the game after that, not before, so that the game can start with that as the input. And then once you're in, you just um, Again, like at the start of the video, check out your axes, move your sticks left and right to find which stick correlates to what, bind them into the appropriate channels, and you should hopefully be good to fly. Thanks for watching. I hope this has cleared up any problems and helped you get set up nice and easy. Tell us what you think of the game on the Steam community forums or on Reddit, and uh, I'll be happy to uh, respond and, and try to make this something that everyone can really enjoy. Thanks.